In this video, I'm going to break down all of the Valorant agents, all of their abilities, show you real world examples, and you will have a greater appreciation for the game when you understand the way the abilities work. And it will set you up to be a much better Valorant player. So let's get stuck into this. Let's begin with Jet. Jet is my favorite agent in Valorant right now. She is super cool. So she is a duelist. This means she's got great movement abilities. She's great at taking 1v1s and she's just amazing to play. I love her. So before we get into these abilities, I want you guys to realize something first. The E ability on every agent is the signature ability. This ability you get at the start of every round. Some of them charge off kills. Some of them charge off time. They simply have a timer. Jets charges off kills and we'll get onto that in a second. So Cloud Burst, as you guys are seeing at the moment, is a great smoke ability. It instantly deploys the smoke when it hits a surface. It does not bounce like a grenade, and you can use three of these per round. Now, they don't last very long. In fact, they are the shortest duration smokes in the game. They do have a cool element to them, though. If you hold down the ability key and move around the mouse, they follow the mouse, so you can actually throw them around corners, which is super cool. So let's take a look at a defensive example of this ability. So I'm caught in a cypher trap. I get a bit excited and I throw all three of my smokes down. One of them would have been enough, but you can see how you can use it to break line of sight and hopefully confuse the enemy and give you a chance to disengage. Typically, you don't want to use them to set up fights. You want to use them in the middle of a fight. Now let's take a look at updraft. Any double box or double crate you see in the game, you can use updraft to get on top of that. And it's super powerful. Again, I'll show you guys examples of that in a second and you get two of them per round. Again, you have to buy that ability at the start of each round. Now, Jet is fairly unique. She has a passive ability, which lets her float. Kind of like Mercy from Overwatch, if any of you guys have played that. However, you have no weapon accuracy while you're floating, but the ultimate is pinpoint accurate whenever you're moving or using any movement ability. And so, yeah, it works really well with the ulti. But I'll show you that in a second. So this is me on defense on point A, and I've taken the high ground. I'm on a double box. Now, I'm looking down towards sewers. The enemy won't expect me to be here. And even if they do, they've still got to check the low ground and check the high ground. I've got the advantage and I get the kill. It is so powerful. And, of course, you can use Tailwind to jump across to the other box. Now, I've got eyes on Banana or A-Long, which is super, super cool. This hero just moves like crazy. So what about using the smokes? Well, I want to push towards B. I've got the bomb I want to plant. Smoke double doors, smoke B main, and then I throw another smoke into B. Look how long these smokes last for. They're very short duration, but I've only got 17 HP, so I've got to be super aware that if the enemy are there, well, I've got to try and confuse them somehow or cover my advance. So I managed to get the spike down. Then I use updraft to get on top of the boxes. Now, the enemy, it's only 1v1 here. The enemy needs to push. They need to defuse the spike as they lose the round. When they push, they have to check low ground, high ground, and I've got the advantage straight away, and I can get the kill. Jet is incredibly powerful when you use updraft. It is so good. So Tailwind, now this is your signature ability. This charges off two kills. So you get one at the start of a round, get two kills in a round, you can use it again. Now, this will blast you forward if you're not moving forward. If you're moving any other direction, it will send you in that direction effectively, left, right, and behind. However, it does have a delay when you dash. So you use it, you dash, you don't fire straight away. What this means is you do not want to dash into the enemy or into a firefight. They will kill you. If an enemy's got a gun pointed at you, they will kill you. So Hame here, great example. He dashes forward to quickly reposition. The enemy walk around the corner. He kills them. Great use of Tailwind there. So let's take a look at Bladestorm. This is like what it's all about with Jet. Everyone loves this. It is a pinpoint accurate hit scan weapon. You fire each knife and it is insanely accurate. There is no... There's just no aim penalty on this. If you're flying through the air, jumping up in the air, moving, whatever, sprinting... There is no aim penalty. Now, if you get a kill, it resets the amount of daggers you've got or knives. And the alternate fire throws whatever daggers you've got left in sort of like a, a spray sort of shotgun style pattern, let's say. So that's great for close encounters. So let's take a look at an example of this. So pushing towards the A site here, use updraft to get over that wall and just get a bit of a, a view of what's going on. Then I pop the ultimate, use updraft again, almost hit that sage, turn back, kill the phoenix, kill the sage, start firing at their jet as she comes around the corner run out of knives because, well, I threw all my knives and then just shoot with my weapon. And it's so cool. But like, you get a lot of moments with Jet where you get these awesome clutch plays. However, it doesn't always work out like that. And I want to show you guys when it goes absolutely terribly wrong. And uh, yeah, so here we're pushing onto the C site. We're using loads of abilities here. Massive smokes, Viper wall, everything is going through here. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, I see a montage. I'm going to just use my ulti and pop my movement abilities. And then I just go straight into a wall and then I die. Yeah. This is Viper. Now, Viper is a very interesting agent. She is a controller. She is fantastic for pushing towards sites, 
beholden sight. She's defensive. She can be aggressive. She's got amazing line of sight blockers. I mean, look at the size of that wall. It is incredible. She's got a fantastic smoke grenade. She's just got an entirely amazing kit that is very unique with all the agents in Valorant. So let's break this down. The first ability we're going to take a look at is Snake Bite. You get two of these per round. You have to buy these because, again, it's not a signature ability. This acts like a grenade. It bounces off surfaces and it deploys a, for want of a better word, basically a Molotov on the ground. This is an area which you can't stand in. It's going to damage you. But instead of fire, it's acid. It damages you. It damages the enemy. It damages your team. You've got to be careful with this. Don't fire it at your team. That's not clever. It's going to damage them. The next ability we've got is Poison Cloud. Now, this is a grenade that you throw and it hits the floor. And it's activatable. You can pick this back up off the ground, but you can't throw multiple of them out. You've only got one. But when you pick it up, there is a short cooldown, as I just showed you guys on the screen there. So throw this grenade down, and then you activate it by pressing the same button you pressed to throw the thing down. And it creates a poison cloud. Now, this poison cloud, it will cause decay damage to allies and enemy, and will take them all the way down to 1 HP. But when they leave it they will actually get their health back, but it doesn't affect Viper because, hey, she's got breathing apparatus all over her face. So the way Viper works is she's got this very unique resource called fuel. And you can see in the middle of the screen, my fuel is going down. I have deployed my smoke grenade over there and now I'm deploying my wall there. It's only a short kind of use of the wall, but it's good enough to cause sign, like line of sight blocking and all of that good stuff on the point. Now, the thing with these walls and the smoke grenade and any kind of smoke that Viper causes, and we'll get onto her ultimate in a second, but it all does the same thing, is it causes line of sight blocking. It damages you if you go through it, but you regain the health when you leave it, unless you're Viper. To Viper, it doesn't affect her. This wall is incredible. You can throw this a very long distance. If you guys notice behind me on the roof there, you see it? Yeah, it's on the roof because I kind of threw it on the roof. Yeah, I'm also using double the amount of fuel when I've got the grenade active and the wall active. So you've got this mini game of managing your resources. It is super cool. So let's take a look at the wall. Look at this. This is me firing the wall up in the sky over towards point C. You can see it on the mini map. You can see the length of it. It's absolutely massive. I deploy the wall. It doesn't matter how long this wall is. It still drains the same amount of resource. But it's just amazing. Like for attacking a point, this is incredible. You also can't destroy this wall. And once it's deployed, it is deployed. That is the end of it. You cannot pick it up again. So let's take a look at the ultimate. This is Viper's Pit. Now you can't cast this very far from yourself. What this does is causes a massive gas cloud to appear and it grows. It doesn't get super massive, but it's big enough to go over a spike site or over the middle of a point. Now in this, people take damage and their health will be reduced to one. They will regain health when they leave it. It's that decay mechanic again. Notice this though. If you leave the smoke as Viper, it starts to collapse. You have to stay in there. This means the enemy know you're in the smoke if the smoke is up. They know where you are so they can fire abilities into it. A really clever way of dealing with this is almost like two players going in at the same time because Viper can't shoot you both if you both come from different angles. Well, let's look at this in use from Viper's perspective. So look, I go in, drop my ulti, big poison cloud. I go to plant. They hear the plant sound. They know I'm there because of the cloud. They come rushing in. I kill them. But did you notice? They're very clear to Viper. Enemy players that go into this and friendly players have got like much reduced vision. You don't. You can see them super clear. So you have got the advantage. Look at that. Massive advantage. It's such a huge advantage. She's such a powerful agent. It's frankly unbelievable. So what I want you guys to realize with this character is you've got to be super careful when her ultimate is deployed. Like that's an enemy by Prolty. You can tell because it's kind of red <laughs> and you really don't want to go in there. It's going to be a bad time. So how do you deal with it? Well, I did kind of touch on this a little bit earlier on in the Viper section, but basically you want to go in at the same time and try and take her out. That's how you deal with it. Well, that's Viper guys. Amazing. Next up, let's take a look at Phoenix, the British character. Uh, so the best. But yeah, I mean, I just flashed myself there. That's actually terrible. <laughs> All right. So this guy, a lot of people think that Jet is the super OP carry in the game. Honestly, I'm going to say that. I think it's Phoenix. Phoenix is really easy to get the pop flashes off, to get the blaze wall deployed. He's just really, really effective. And his ultimate lets you kind of just go complete Papega no brain mode and rush in. It is really, really strong. All right, let's break down his abilities. So the first one we're going to look at is blaze. This is his wall. You can deploy this once per round. Now, you'll notice around the edge of the screen, I was going green there. Well, this heals you. Any fire damage from you will heal you, but not from the enemy uh, Phoenix that will actually kill you. So don't go into their walls and don't go into their uh, like Molotovs on the ground. That'll be bad news for you. Um, but you can see, you can use this to dance through. So you deploy the wall, dancing left and right, you're getting healed. So if you're in a firefight, that actually can be really strong. 
The other thing you can do with this is bend it. So as you deploy it, if you hold down the ability key and then move the mouse, you can create like little curves in it. Really cool. You can set up some nice plays with that. Now, looking at curveball, this is a pop flash. What I mean by that is it detonates in the air, but you can only throw it left or right. You can't throw this forward. Now, looking at... What the? Looking at the flash is a pretty long duration. If you turn away from it, though, it's only a split second, which isn't too bad. You can kind of react. But remember, time to kill is so low in this game. If somebody flashes you like this, you're dead, right? There's no way you're going to react to that. You're just dead. They're going to walk around the corner and kill you. So, yeah, flash comes around the corner and then dead. Yeah, this will happen a lot. And, yeah, you've got to kind of really rapidly react and turn around. So what about combos? Well, you can use blaze and curveball together. Blaze blocks line of sight. Curveball, you can throw through Blaze and flash people on the other side of it. So look at this for an example. When I'm attacking the point, throw down Blaze, walk in. They know I'm coming. They flash me and they freeze me with the Sage Slow. But it's mad because I've got my pop flash through the wall, managed to get the kill. He's so effective. The best way to think of Phoenix is he is a very strong entry fragger if you use your abilities as you're going into the fight. Deploying the wall, deploying your pop smokes, or your pop flashes even, <laughs> and then doing damage. It is so strong. It is incredible. So this is his signature ability. Now, like Jet, this charges on kills. So you need two kills to recharge it, and you get it for free at the start of a round. It is a Molotov, but with one interesting dynamic, it heals you. So if you take a bit of poke damage, you can throw this on the floor and heal yourself up, and then go back for another fight. It also bounces off walls as well, so you can throw it, you know, around corners effectively by bouncing it off stuff. Really strong ability. It's also great for area denial, and maybe not all the time you're going to use it for a heal, but it just shows you how self-sufficient Phoenix is. So here, on A long, I'm going to use it to deny the enemy pushing through, throw it down. Yeah, it's not mega long duration, but it's enough to push the enemy away. So you always need to be aware of that. Now here, I'm getting pushed back. There's a big, massive Brimstone Ultimate. Any Command & Conquer fans out there in the chat? GDI Ion Cannon, let's go. I've been revealed, so my reaction is, uh-oh, they might be pushing on me because they know I'm there. So I throw my hot hands down there. Now let's take a look at Run It Back. This is the ultimate ability. Now, if any of you guys have played the latest Apex Legends character, then you will be familiar with this ability. Basically, wherever you're standing when you activate it, you will appear back there when you take fatal damage. However, it must be said, if you do have shields, so if you've got 100 health and 500 shields for a total of 150 health, if you die, you will not get your shields back, but you will, or well, you'll be alive. It lets you do stuff like this. You can just no-brain rush people, which is super strong, right? But if the enemy know where you are, there is this delay, this animation delay, they can camp you and kill you, so always be aware of that. Next up, let's take a look at Sage. She is a Sentinel agent. This means she's more defensively focused, but be under no illusions. She can be very, very offensive. Now, one thing to notice here is you can see the health bars of friendly players underneath their character model. This is because you can heal them. This is really, really good. You can also heal yourself, but I'll show you guys about that in a second. So let's take a look at Sage's abilities. Now, our first ability is Barrier Orb. You can deploy this once per round, and it is a very, very strong wall ability. Any May fans in the chat, you're going to love this because, well, it's pretty much a May wall, only it's like a May wall on steroids. It is so powerful. So you can flip the deployment of this, which is pretty standard. If you've played Overwatch, you know how this works. But look, you can do this. So if you hold down right mouse button while you've got the ability active, you can fine tune the placement of the wall. This is great. But not only that, it remembers the placement. So here, I've got a nice angle to my wall. Then I'm going to unequip the barrier orb. I've got my weapon back. I'm walking around. Oh, it's great. Maybe I need my wall back. Well, my wall's in the same position. It is so strong. This lets you set up wall positions. That is just incredibly powerful. Now, what about the wall itself? Well, we're going to speed this up because the wall lasts for a very, very long time. You'll notice that it is starting to crack and you can shoot the wall. Your team can destroy it. The enemy team can destroy it. And you can see there's four very distinct blocks and you can blow them through. It lasts for 40 seconds, this wall. That is very strong. Considering how long the rounds are in Valorant, this is mega powerful. Again, you can fire through it and destroy it, but the enemy will know you're there. If you're making loads of noise, firing into a barrier, it's like, hey, they're behind the wall, guys. Get them. You can also boost yourself with it. Now, let's watch a bit of, bit of fail here. So you can deploy this underneath yourself and then, yeah, get onto high ground. But I'm terrible because I was acting a little bit too fast. You can also wall boost yourself at chokes. So basically block off a choke with the wall, stay on the wall, behind the wall, if this makes any sense, and then you can 
move out for a cheeky sort of high ground poke. But what about using it defensively? Well, look at this. That wall there is completely blocked off the A approach to this point, or the A long approach. And it let me take out that character because, well, they, they had to go move around the wall like they were trapped. It is so powerful. This is like one of the singular most powerful abilities in this game. And when we talk about power levels of heroes right now, Sage, she's right up there. She is a, a, a character you really want on your team. I keep saying agents. I keep saying characters, heroes, whatever, right? They're agents in Valorant, but you guys know what I'm saying. So check this out. Cheeky little boost there. You can boost your allies. I mean, how beautiful is that? They can get into wonderful little positions. Now, it is very sturdy, the wall. Like, you're not going to get through this unless you've got some heavy firepower. Like, here, I'm trying to get through it. There's just no way. Like, I'm, I'm literally trapped here. I'm a character that has no movement abilities that can get me through that. So, I'm stuck. I've got to shoot it. Now, what about Slow Orb? Because she's got a Molotov, but this Molotov slows you down. It doesn't damage you. And you can see it bounces off walls. So, when I say Molotov, I just mean a general sort of area denial ability. This freezes you off. It slows you down. You pretty much can't jump in this. You can sort of bunny hop across it, but not very well. You are going to be trapped in this unless you are Jet. Jet can jump through this, so be aware. If you think you've got a Jet froze, you haven't. Well, you never get froze, but if you think you've reduced the movement speed of a Jet, well, I've got news for you. You probably haven't. So here we're going to see it being used, thrown all across the point. It creates a massive mess. Look at this. I'm trapped in it. It's pretty much froze most of the point. You can use two of these per round as well. And again, you have to buy these abilities. Only the signature ability you get for free at the start of a round. And we're on to her signature ability here. It is Healing Orb. This is a heal over time. Primary fire will apply it to one of your allies. Secondary fire will apply it to you. So if you take damage like I have here, I can heal myself. And look how fast it heals. It's really strong. Again, it's sort of like Phoenix, where you can heal yourself if you've taken damage. The difference with Sage, though, is you can heal allies. So if anybody is super low, like look at my side there, he's about to die. It doesn't matter. I can heal him up. This means he can go again. He can take another fight. That is incredibly powerful. I mean, it's such a powerful ability. So let's talk about Resurrection. Because Resurrection is one of the abilities that a lot of people were getting super hyped for. And they were like, uh, this is just going to destroy the game. When I say hyped, I mean, like, Resurrect in an FPS game... Now, what I've got to say is the ultimates in Valorant, you don't get them. Like, you maybe use them three times in an entire match. You're not going to use them constantly over and over again every round. The problem with this res is you have to make the decision. Am I going to res this person? Are they going to survive? Well, <laughs> sometimes they, they might. Sometimes they'll just instantly die. If the enemy can see somebody being resurrected, they line their crosshairs up on them. And as soon as they become well, resurrected, they just kill them instantly. And you've wasted the ultimate as you guys are about to see here. But yeah, bringing back a dead ally is a powerful ultimate if they don't get instantly killed. So use with caution. Main, main doors, main doors. Next up, we've got Sova. Now, Sova is an initiator. If you, you're a fan of Hanzo, you're going to like Sova. He's basically a Russian Hanzo. He's really, really strong. So he has got a bunch of abilities that will show the location of enemy players. Now, this, of course, in a tactical shooter is incredibly strong. You can play around these abilities and I'll show you the strengths and weaknesses in a second. But yes, this character, I think, is a little bit of an underrated hero, especially in the closed alpha we were playing in. A lot of people were like, yeah, everything is good. Everything is bad. I don't know. I think he's really, really good. Check this out. So his first ability is Owl Drone. You can use this once per match. It deploys a little drone. It is terrible to control, but that's the point. It can't be super responsive because it would give you too much intel. Now, at the bottom of the screen is its duration. As you can see, it's about to run out and it has. Now, the other thing you can do with this is it fires a sensor dart. Now, look on the right-hand side of the UI in the middle of the screen. I fire, it's going to disappear and then recharge. You can get two sensor darts out if you pretty much fire instantly. If these tag a player, it will show you their location. But of course, you can just see around the corner so you can tell your team on voice comms where the enemy team are. Now, Shock Bolt. This is actually really nice. So this bounces off walls. Now, the way, or it doesn't if you want. Now, the way the, the bow works, if you look in the middle of the screen, you can see, and also you can you can damage yourself with this. Yeah, so don't damage yourself. But look in the middle of the screen. You can actually decide if you want one or two bounces with this. Now, the way it works is you pull the bow back and then you press uh, right click once and right click again. If you do it twice, it will bounce off walls twice. If you do it once, it will bounce off a wall once. So there's a lot of trick shot sort of potential with this where you can bounce it around corners or you can just fire it off the map like I've done there. But you can bounce it all over the place and it's really strong and you get two of these per round. And again, you have to buy these abilities. Remember, as I've been saying throughout this video, guys, only the signature ability you get given for free at the start of a round. Some heroes have a cooldown and some have kills uh, to reset. Now, let's take a look at Recon Bolt. This is the Hanzo Sonic Arrow. Now, see the pulses that are coming out here. It will only detect on pulse. It won't just instantly detect everyone in that area straight away. 
you can destroy it as well. So if you see this hit the wall by you, you shoot it. Obviously, if it's an enemy one, it will be bright red. Now, again, you can bounce this round corners, which means you can do loads of really cool stuff. You can fire it into points. You can work out trick shots with it. You can just give your team the information of the enemy team's location. Now, it only detects from line of sight. It will not detect everyone inside the area. So if you see it get deployed by you, just hide by a crate or hide by something which will block its line of sight and they will not know you're there. You will be a made to, uh, there'll be a massive alert on the screen as well, guys, when you get detected by this. So don't worry about being like, oh, am I detected? But you can see, look at that there. Look at the info it has given us there. It allowed me to wall bang through that crate a little bit, force that Sova out of position. It is so powerful. So what about the ultimate? Right, this is Hunter's Fury and this is like a, a budget Hanzo dragon, right? You fire three shots. Your aim is completely screwed when you're firing them. You're almost locked into where you're firing and you can't really change. But it goes through the wall, goes across the map. And if it hits somebody, it shows their location. So the idea with this is you hit tag somebody with it and then you try and track them with it through the wall. It's really powerful. So let's take a look at the drone being used in game. Drone goes around the corner, great tag there, and then straight into it with the ultimate, destroying that Phoenix. This guy is incredibly powerful. Next up, we're taking a look at Omen. Now, if you're a fan of Reaper, you're probably a fan of Omen. Uh, yeah, he's got kind of Reaper's teleport, although it's not the same, and I'll explain how this works. So Omen is what's known as a controller. This means he can smoke, and his smokes are really powerful. He can also teleport across the map with his ultimate. He can also short-range teleport. He can also disorientate players' vision, effectively by throwing an orb which just travels across the map, and when it hits you, it messes up your vision so you can only see short range, and it's called paranoia. Let's break down his abilities. So these are just, this guy's crazy. So Shrouded Step, this is a short range teleport, but you can use this to teleport onto high ground, much like Jet's Jump. So any double crates, you can get up there and it doesn't have any trail. So you can go across chokes and the enemy won't know. Of course, they will hear a very loud audio prompt that they'll know somebody has ported. It'll be like, uh oh, Omen's ported across, but is he across the choke near me? They might not know. Really powerful for that. So again, let's just take a look at some examples here. It's not massively long range. And of course, there is a little bit of a delay from when you fire when you come out of this. So if you are porting and the enemy catch you porting, they can kill you because you've got your weapon holstered effectively, which means you're going to die. All right, then. So here you go. You can see an example of taking high ground. This is somewhere Jet can get to with her updraft ability or Omen can get to. So if there's an Omen or a Jet on the enemy team, you've got to check these double crates because they could be up there and it will ruin your day. And you can use two of these per round. And again, it is an ability you have to buy. So this is Paranoia. Paranoia flows through the map. You can throw it through any wall and it will flow the entire length of the map. And if it hits anyone, they cannot see. They can only see literally half a meter away from them. And this lets you push on them and take them out. Watch this from my perspective. See, it comes at me, hits me. Look at that. I can't see nothing. Like, I can barely see the very close range environment. And that is when you're super vulnerable. It's really good for pushing around corners. So let's take a look at Dark Cover. It's a little bit finicky to deploy this, but again, it flows or flies and flows, whatever you want to use. It goes through walls, basically, guys. It is a smoke you can throw through walls. Now, to deploy it, you can see it's a bit janky, but I think this is for gameplay reasons, because if you could just deploy this on a quick tap, that'd be a bit mental. So you have to kind of like line this up and fire it. It is a massive smoke. It is a very long duration smoke. But notice inside it, it's clear. It only blocks vision on the periphery of this, not actually inside it. So it's not like a smoke in the sense of like a traditional smoke, but it's still very powerful. So here we're going to see some pro gamer moves where the enemy are pushing me and I just use everything. <laughs> I'm like, just use everything. Just blow paranoia, smoke, paranoia, go, just everything. Just, just use everything. Um, it worked because I got killed. I mean, there's, there's value there. I'll take it. <laughs> but again, you can use it to sell it. You can, you, you can block chokes with this. Omen's smoke is very similar to Brimstone's when we get onto Brimstone's in that it lasts for a long time. You can deploy it and you are controlling an area when you do it. Whereas in comparison to Jet, you're, you're really not. Like Jet's is, is gone now. This is a long duration smoke and it is very powerful for that. Well, all right, let's move on to From the Shadows. Now, From the Shadows is the ultimate ability. You can teleport across the map. And it is the entire map. Now, this sounds insane on the face of it. It's like, oh my God, you can teleport anywhere on the map. Now, there are some caveats to this. When you use it, you become a specter. So as I'm teleporting here, I become a specter at this moment in time. They can shoot me. And if they do that, then I will go back to the start location of the teleport. It won't kill me. Or the enemy can decide to just let me pour in. You notice that you can't see. Look, it's, it's, your vision is blocked. This guy should have killed me, but they didn't. And I managed to kill them. A really cool thing you can do with this is you can throw out your smoke and then pour inside your smoke. 
That is really cool. But I'm not going to show you that. Instead, I'm going to show you me pointing to the other side of the map, trying to get mad kills, but I've got the spike. And uh, that's a great way to throw. Also, notice top left of the screen, the minimap. That happens when an enemy omen ports. Have we got any entry fraggers out there watching this video? Yeah, because this guy is for you. If you like Phoenix, you're probably going to like this guy. His name is Breach. I mean, <laughs> Breach. He's going to breach. He's just going to create a breach. He's going to breach the point. That's what this guy does. His abilities all go through walls. That's right, guys. It sounds absolutely sickening when you say it like that. It's like, uh, what? His abilities go through walls? What's going to happen here? It is pretty ridiculous. So what this guy's all about is setting up initiation, setting up plays. If you want to push onto a point, you want to take breach and you want to start spamming flashes, high damaging abilities, shockwaves, all kinds of stuff through a wall. All right, let's take a look at aftershock. So you've got one aftershock per round. Now, what this does is massive damage to anybody caught in the blast. Now, you can do this through a wall. So if you notice that somebody is camping in a corner, well, you can give them this. And it, look at the damage. It does massive damage to people. The thing is, though, you have a lot of time to escape this. So if you are on the other side of the wall and you see this deployed behind you, you can get out of the way. It's like, uh oh, I can get out of the way. It's not an instant thing. It's not going to wipe you out clean. But it will catch you off guard. And it catches you off guard quite a lot. Because if you're focusing on something, you're firing away. It's beautiful. I mean, look at that. That... Yeah, that's that's really good play there by the enemy breach. Set up a great kill on me, used his ability, but then ducks out and starts firing at me. And again, there, just caught in the crossfire with it and instantly killed. This is sickening. This is flashpoint. It is a flash. You can deploy at range, not massive range. You can see here when the, the rescue goes red, I you can't deploy it. But it's an instant flash through a wall. It's like Phoenix's flash, but through a wall. It is mad, but look how fast it goes off. So if you hit this on a wall, you have to be really quick to get in there to start doing damage because it's going to flash the enemy team and you've got to get your gun out and start smashing them. Again, you can see, look how long it flashes for. It is a mega powerful ability. This guy is just an incredible character. Like he was one of the, 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 the agents that we hadn't seen up until the closed alpha. And it was like, oh my God, this guy is just crazy. He can flash through walls. He can do damage through walls. It's great. I mean, look at that. I popped out there. I'm firing, trying to do damage. It don't matter because I've just been flashed. We've been double flashed and we're dead. Let's take a look at Fault Line. Now, this is the signature ability. Now, this is on cooldown. So, what this does is it will recharge after you use it. You can increase the range of it by holding E down and it goes through walls. And the effect of this is it will slow and it will stun enemy players when it hits them. So, again, a great initiation ability. Throw this through a choke, pop out, start doing damage. Because when you're hit by this, you're not going to be doing damage to anyone. You can't aim. Like, you literally cannot aim. Great use here. We see around the corner. Kills one of them. I mean, that is just an incredible use of that ability. It is so strong. So let's take a look at another example. Coming through the teleporter. Hit by it. Look at that. You can't aim. You are going to die if this hits you. Rolling Thunder. The ultimate ability. Think of Reinhardt's Earth Shatter if you guys play Overwatch on absolute steroids. This does the same thing as his signature ability, only it knocks you up in the air. This is incredibly punishing. And also, it's massively wide like the range of it is bigger it's just fatter you can throw this across an entire point and then push and then get a kill it is so good and you can see as well it travels inside it travels through all walls into buildings everywhere it is an incredibly powerful ultimate this is but again it's an ultimate so you only get this like two or three times an entire match so let's take a look at an example they're planting the bomb it's 1v1 i initiate with the ulti see how it knocks them up in the air take them out so strong this character is actually insane Next up is Cypher. Cypher is a sentinel hero. He is the most defensive agent in the entire game. He's got a whole host of little traps, little kind of technological tricks. If you guys like Rainbow Six Siege, you'll probably like this guy because he's got things like remote cameras. He's got trip wires. He's got all kinds of fancy stuff that he can use to absolutely mess up your day. So let's start with trap wire. Now, this deploys a trip wire when it's activated. But the way it works is you get two of these. You can throw them down and they create a little, like, little, little trap wire. Now, you can pick these back up, but you have to target them and press F near them, and then you can redeploy. However, once they get used, they're used, and you can't redeploy it again. Now, what happens with these is you can detect them if you are walking. But if you're sprinting, you won't see them, and they will catch you, and this will happen. It's like, uh-oh, what the hell? But you do have a window of opportunity where you can shoot it and destroy it. Now, if you do that, then it won't trigger. So like this here, uh oh, I'm caught in it. I shoot it, pop out, get two kills. Now, if that tripwire had activated, I would have been screwed. I'd have been dazed. 
I'd have been location revealed, as you can see here. That player has walked into one of mine, and his location has been revealed. But he's also dazed, and it just means you can push this guy because he cannot aim at you. You're going to destroy him. Also, you should probably help your teammates out if they get caught in it. Yeah, you should probably shoot it before it goes off and stuns them. As you can see, he's dazed and stunned because he had the stars around his head. So, yeah. Uh, but at least we managed to get the win, though, so it's fine. <laughs> All right, next up, we've got Cyber Cage. Now, this thing is beautiful because it blocks line of sight. However... You have to activate it, and you get two of them. So you can throw two of these on the floor. You can pick them back up by pressing F. But if you activate them, that's it. You can't pick it up again. It's basically blown. And while it's active, you can't turn it off. It's just on. Now, the way it works is it's hollow inside. It blocks line of sight. But if an enemy walks through it, it emits a different sound effect. So you know somebody's in it. So you can just spray the hell out of it. You know they're in there. So again, you can see you can throw two on the ground. You have to target them to activate them. Like you're not just spamming the ability button to activate them again. You physically have to look at them to turn them on and off. But that means you can do some cute stuff with the security cam. And I'll show you that in a second. So cyber cage usage examples. Now this cage is down and the enemy are walking through it. I can hear them. I know they're walking through it. There they are. Boom. And I can take out the enemy jet. Really powerful for that. So let's take a look at an example here where we set up a few on the point ready for the push. Now, you can see they're on either side. I can turn them on and I can get ready for the enemy push. Now, this is the main line of sight terrain blocker in the middle of this point, And I'm sort of extending it a bit with my cyber cages and using them for cover to sort of pop out and catch the enemy by surprise. It is incredibly powerful. It's a really, really strong ability. And it also, well, it let me sort of get a bit of a clutch play there and take out the enemy team. Super strong. But this is what you can do with the spy cam. And it's really good. So if you've got your traps down, well, your cyber cage is down and you deploy the spy cam. When you look at the spy cam and act, well, you just pre you don't have to look at the spy cam. I need to sort of really make that the emphasis on that. You just press the ability button again. You go into the camera and you can activate your objects by looking at them, which is really cool. Thing is, though, with spy cam, it's invisible until you activate it. When you activate it, the enemy will see it and it is very clear where it is. That it's like this big red thing on the wall. However, until that point, it's completely invisible. Now, you can use it offensively. Look at this. This is me using it to say, uh oh, guys, we're getting pushed mid because I can see them. They've got, they're probably going to destroy it because they've seen it. Whatever. If I use it again, they're going to destroy it. But we get intel. And that's what these tactical shooters are all about. You get intel, you can actually get massive results. So here we go again. There's one of the enemy players coming through. I've tried to shoot him with a dart. I think I've slightly missed him with a dart there, but if I hit him, it works very similar to Sova's drone and it will show their location. All right then, check this out. Neural theft. If somebody dies and you've got your ultimate up, remember ultimates only happen like two or three times an entire match. It shows you the location of everybody on the enemy team on the minimap. But it doesn't show you their real-time location. It shows you their location for a split second as it's active and you also throw your cool hat down. So look at the minimap, location revealed. Now those guys can move and get into a different location now, but at least I know where they are. Let's move on to Brimstone. Brimstone is a controller. He is extremely versatile. He has the best smokes in the entire game. He can deploy them pretty much across the map. It's not the entire map, but he can deploy from anywhere. They are so powerful. You can also deploy them indoors as well, although the interaction is kind of a little bit janky, and that's his ultimate. It is actually a GDI ion cannon from Command and Conquer. It is insane. All right, let's take a look at Stim Beacon. So Stim Beacon, you throw this down and it gives you an area of effect on the ground that gives you a 10% increased fire rate. But not only for you, it also gives it to the enemy team. So don't throw this into the middle of a fight because you'll be buffing the enemy and that is not clever. It does last a long time though. Now you can do stuff like this. Just absolutely, well, I mean, I hate these doors. Let's destroy them. Those doors are actually really cool because they've got armor on them. You destroy the armor, then you can wall bang them. It's beautiful. Um, so yeah, you can use it for pushes like that. It also works really well with SMGs. Throw it on the ground, get yourself an SMG, go crazy. You can deploy two of those. Now, Incendiary, this is a Molotov. You've got one of these per round and it bounces off a wall and it acts like a grenade. And that's kind of it. It's just a big Molotov. That's, that's it. That's all there is to it. Just an area denial thing. It's nice. You can spam it onto points, do whatever you like, but you can only use it once per round. As again, you can see it bounces off walls and stuff. It's fine. It just acts like a grenade and it is a Molotov. Now, let's move on to Sky Smoke. These are incredible. So it brings up this UI. Now, what you do with the UI is notice you can't see the entire map. You can see most of it. Now, if you place a smoke marker down with the left mouse button and then walk off the map, it will get rid of that smoke marker. However, if they're all within view on the map, you can deploy them. So you can do three if you like. 
So you basically left click to set the location, right click to confirm. They drop down from the sky. You can deploy them. Yeah. And they're, they're just, they, they're crazy. They are the longest lasting smokes in the game. They block line of sight completely. When you're inside them, they block line of sight. They're just incredibly powerful. They are just ridiculously good. You use these to set up fights. You use these to defend chokes. It's just incredible. So watch this. We've got the B choke in the middle of the map and we've got the double door choke. At the start of the round, I'm just going to smoke them off. This lets us push into the courtyard. How powerful is this? This guy is a crazy powerful hero. He's just incredible. We can also use him offensively as well. So I'm pushing towards the point here. It's 1v1. And I'm going to smoke off the A connector at the back of the site. And then I'm going to move forward. And then I'm going to get the plant off. Knowing that I've smoked the back of the point off. And it reduces the angles that I need to look at. That is incredibly powerful. This guy is insane. Now, his final ability is ultimate ability. Remember, you only get to use these two or three times a game. It's an orbital strike. It does massive damage. It goes inside buildings. It just It's just ridiculous. It fires a massive beam from the sky and it will kill you. If you're in the middle of this, you will die. However, you do have enough time to run out of it. So if this is cast upon you, then run away immediately. Equip your knife so you run faster and run the hell away from it. You will die. Now, it will damage your team. It doesn't do as much damage to you as it does to the enemy, but it is incredibly powerful. So watch out for this. If it's on top of you, you're probably going to die. Like, you need to run. It's like, oh my god, the ultimate, get out of there. See, it hit me. It did like, I'm at 81 health now. That's not great. It did a lot of damage. You've got to get the hell out of there. This is a nice combo by the enemy. They notice that, oh, we're all together here with the, with the I want to call it the Sonic Arrow, but it's the uh, the recon <laughs> bolt from Sova. And uh, yeah, then they blast the ultium. So that pretty much covers all of the agents right now, guys. Some ridiculous abilities out there. This video will give you a very good basis of knowledge to go forward and take part in the closed beta uh, if you guys are lucky enough to get a key. But it will give you a more rounded opinion, I think, on the way the game works oh and on the way God. the agents work. Remember, guys, if you want more footage and more video content on Valorant, do subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Stylosa. It's also the same on Instagram. And you can follow me on Twitch, which is twitch.tv forward slash Stylosa. And I, of course, am playing a lot of Valorant on my stream. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Toodaloo. <laughs> Oh, somebody's dead. Bye. Who's next?